question is from that fly guy. What's the best way to learn how to eat new healthy foods that you haven't enjoyed in the past? I can't stand salmon and most fish, but I want the health benefits. Can you teach yourself to like new foods? Oh, you completely. Dude, I've done this a lot lately. You totally can do this. One of the big problems with with, uh, I guess, uh, modern life and, and our food is that we've only learned to value food for its palatability. And if that's the only value you place on food, yeah, you're not going to like a lot of stuff. You're going to like only the stuff that is super hedonistic uh, while you eat it. Um, but you can make associations. And by the way, food companies know this. They've been advertising to you in this way for a long time. Once you, I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll tell a story. I've told this story before, but I love it because it was one of my favorite learning experiences with a client. I had a client that had one of the worst diets you've ever seen in your whole entire life, never ate any vegetables ever, made her gag, made her throw up. Now, over time, I slowly convinced her to at least try, I would tell her, eat one broccoli floret uh, to start with once a week. And what she would do is she would track how she felt. Once she got to the to point where she was eating like a serving here and there, she started to write things down like digestion is better, mood feels better, uh, I have more energy, my skin is starting to look better. As she started to make those connections and associate the vegetables with those good feelings, she started to actually desire to eat yeah. the broccoli. She started to want to eat the broccoli. And because of that association, you actually learn – to like the taste. Mm-hmm. You actually learn to enjoy the taste. This happened to me with fish. When I I hated fish when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Could not stand fish whatsoever. Then, you know, fast forward, I'm in my mid 20s and I go to Italy. And by this point, I started to really understand good nutrition. I started to understand the the ben- the value of fish. And so I said to myself, look, I'm going to Italy. It's a country right in the Mediterranean. I mean, I have access to incredible fish. They eat a lot of fish there anyway. I'm going to go and I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to try it. I'm going to pay attention to how I feel. By the end of my vacation, I actually developed a uh, an appreciation for fish. Now, don't get me wrong. A steak, in terms of the taste and palatability, kicks the crap out of fish for me. However, I went from someone who hated fish to someone now who had learned to enjoy it. So you totally. Well, yeah. and if you're not a big fish eater, I wouldn't recommend jumping to salmon first either. I would I would recommend going somewhere like sea bass, mahi mahi, halibut, uh, like the wider fishes. Like mm-hmm. if you're not a fish lover, um, you know salmon has a strong fish salmon taste. Unless you have like if you go somewhere and get um, and that's to me when you find amazing salmon is when it doesn't taste fishy. Right. Like amazing, really good fresh salmon. Yeah. It t- doesn't taste fishy. But if you're not a fish lover already and you go directly to salmon, it's not a good place to start. You, I, I would always start somebody off with the halibut, the sea bass, the mahi-mahi. I'm trying to think what else I love to Yeah, that's what got me into it was the halibut. Yeah, yeah oh my God, got, those are amazing. Yeah, a meaty, meaty taste to it. It's, really me- good. it's meaty. It doesn't taste fishy. It even has like this buttery. It's soft. Like it just doesn't taste anything like salmon. Salmon is yeah. salmon is fishy. I, and it took me a long time to like, like salmon. So, yeah. And I was just like you, Sal. I didn't like fish at all. Yeah. Um, um, and it, it took me a long, t- except for uh, tuna and drowned it in mayonnaise when I was a kid, oh. right? So that's how I ate that when I was a kid. Other than that, I ate no fish till I got older. Same thing. Had to like kind of make myself like it. And the and I did too, because everyone talks about all that, the benefits of salmon. We all know that salmon is like one of the most nutrient rich fish that you can get. So as I started to learn about that, I began to gr- try and force myself to eat salmon. And it was, it was rough for me to do that. When I, then I found like halibut and sea bass and my, all these other fishes. I'm like, oh my god! Like I love those. Then I got used to eating that a lot, and then inter- and having salmon different ways. Like and now I, I mean, uh, my favorite thing to have is uh, salmon sashimi. Like I'll eat raw salmon now. I love that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's funny. I mean, this is still a bit of a struggle for me, as you guys know. Like uh, in terms of like sushi and everything else, and eating fish in general. But like I used to have a really good association with it to start with because I fished. Like I would oh, fish makes a difference, and yeah. then I would cut and and do the like I would you know like gut it and everything and cook it myself, and it was like fantastic. Fantastic, but uh, you know, somewhere along the lines, I, I, I went away from it, and then I had a bad experience because I was like eating it in the Midwest somewhere, 
and it was just like I had just like bad examples of fish. So I think you know to to kind of you know rekindle that like it, it does make sense to go somewhere where you're like right next to the coast or you're you're near a lake or, oh, yeah. or you know make sure you're like you're in a fresh spot and it's not like being transferred there from somewhere else uh, and just start like slowly you know incorporating it back in and I'm trying even right now like I tolerate it like if somebody serves it to me I'm gonna eat it. You know, yeah. it's fine, but I'm not seeking it out like I should be. Uh, but yeah, I had the same thing with with uh, vegetables. I mean, I grew up and it was like, I mean, b- looking back now too, because my dad was uh, an only child and he would actually, my, my grandma was sick all the time. So he actually cooked for everybody in his family, even as a kid. And so, you know, as a kid, what do you want to eat? It's all bland. It's, ve- you know, it's, yeah. it's very simple, like microwavable <laughs> crap. And yeah. so like that was his palate and then he brought that into our family and then we're just eating like uh, an example of a salad was like iceberg lettuce and celery and carrots and like ranch yeah. like, <laughs> and like that's what i grew up with you know what i mean yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's taken i've taken a lot of steps uh and, and i get a hard time everywhere i go you know from from courtney and her family but like i've done a lot of work on this and like i'm, I'm eating no, uh, associations to food is a real thing look yeah. if it, to most americans if you walk into a market and and you smell a strong fish smell, most of us are like, oh, that's gross. In Asian countries, it's not. To them, the association is totally different. They smell the fishy smell from a market. It's like, yes, I'm around really good food. They get hungry, probably. Yeah. That's right. It's it's the associate. Like Jessica did the same thing. She grew up eating zero vegetables as a kid. Yeah. Zero. She ate nothing. She almost in- subsisted entirely on heavily processed food. As she got older and learned about health, she slowly introduced vegetables, started to identify the value that it was providing her body, built that association, and now she loves vegetables. Oh, I, I was the same way. We didn't. It wasn't until even Doug. Uh, I, I hated Brussels sprouts. I eat Brussels sprouts bowls. That's of them, my go-to. Yeah, uh, every week now. Dude, that I mean, used to be a food that we made fun of as kids. Yeah, yeah. you remember that? Yeah, oh, disgusting. Oh, they were. Oh, oh yeah. totally. Think about it this way. Here's another good example. I bet most people have a food that they ate as a kid that they associated with like fun or something like that, that if you didn't have that association, it would literally be disgusting. Like I'll give you an example. Uh, macaroni and cheese in the box, right? Kraft macaroni and cheese. It's gross. That's it's, just good. It's disgusting. <laughs> but you know what? I associated it you with- chop up some hot dogs in it oh, too. Uh, terrible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's garbage. But when I was a kid- yeah, five cheese one. When I was a kid, when we would have my cousins over, I had cousins that liked it for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. And so it was like the special treat and- you know, my mom would be like, whatever, I'll buy it for you. And she'd make it. And it was this fun food. So now to this day, if I smell it or I taste it, it I have that positive, fun association. No, you're so right. You yeah. can 100% train yourself this way. It just takes time. But start to associate your food with its other values besides just the hedonistic value of it. Otherwise, you'll be stuck eating the, the, the processed, hyper palatable foods or the foods you grew up eating that you're super used to.